A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, November 15th. Government today gave the assurance that it is not excluding any players from the tourism sector. In fact, according to Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins, efforts are ongoing to build an all-inclusive sector. Her comments come on the heels of complaints leveled by taxi operators who took to social media to lament that despite the return of cruise ships at the Bridgetown port, large tour operators were the only ones benefiting from the business and small taxi operators were being shut out. Addressing a ceremony to welcome the inaugural visit of the Holland American Line cruise ship Rotterdam this morning, Cummins insisted this was not the case. Whether it is in air or it is in sea, we want to ensure that those 40,000 workers directly and those 35,000 workers indirectly in all segments of the market have an opportunity to benefit and to regain their lives and their livelihoods as a direct consequence of the work that we are doing. It is for naught if we are able to bring all of these passengers and they fill hotel rooms but they're not able to have authentic local experiences that benefit them and their families in a real and a meaningful way. And we are hopeful that in the coming weeks, the discussions with the cruise lines and with our partners will allow for that broad-based engagement and that inclusive approach to tourism that we as a people believe in, we as a government are committed to, and myself and Minister Humphrey in our respective roles will lead the way in ensuring that it comes to fruition. Cummins got the support of her colleague, Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kurt Humphrey, who echoed that talks are ongoing to ensure all players benefit. It's important that we make sure that the bubble is safe. I know Minister Cummins at the BTMI did a lot of work to make sure that our taxi associations, whether it's the independent or the co-op, are in a position to offer safe tours. Um, we hope that when we present or continue to present the safety that we believe are associated with these taxi associations that YouTube would allow the guests to find favor with them to uh, spread the work in Barbados because in this country the, the principles on which we are built is in relation to the environment but it's also in relation to people and I have a strong belief that that is the same principle by which you obey. So we will continue those conversations. We trust that as we go forward we'll be able to make progress on these very important matters. Meanwhile, the tourism sector appears on course to make big gains this year. After a flat year for the sector as a result of the impact of COVID-19, Minister Cummins said with the increase in airlift and the return of cruise ships, tourism is on track to end 2021 on a high note. We have already been able to see a resumption of airlift in our traditional partners. American Airlines continues to fly to Barbados and we are expecting to see additional airlift over the coming weeks. JetBlue, we're pleased to welcome JetBlue back, not just in its regular travel, but in its red-eye service, which is going to run over the festive season. We have welcomed KLM and we welcomed uh, Aer Lingus, and I'm pleased as part of the cruise, the air to sea tours that we have begun last Saturday, to welcome back TUI into the fold, both from air and into sea. I am pleased that over the coming weeks, we will welcome again in support of our air to sea operations United, into Barbados and they will be providing airlift and so quite a lot of work has gone on in the last year to prepare us for this moment where we are able to say proudly almost in a bit of a tongue-in-cheek way it is difficult to get a seat to Barbados on board any aircraft despite the airlift that we have been describing. However, Virgin Atlantic confirmed that it will be suspending its Manchester to Barbados flights for summer 2022. A spokesman for the airline told Barbados today the demand for the summer period is low in contrast to the upcoming winter season. The Manchester to Barbados service is currently operating four times per week and will continue until the end of April next year. The airline spokesman says the carrier will resume the service in autumn 2022 after the summer pause. In today's COVID-19 update, the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory confirmed there were 223 positive cases of the virus. Of these, 42 persons are under the age of 18 and 181 were 18 years and older. 927 people are in isolation facilities and 7,419 in home isolation. One person, a 64-year-old man, succumbed to the virus on Sunday while at the Harrison's Point isolation facility. He was unvaccinated. Today, 194 lives have been lost to the virus. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, 
When the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, security experts share mixed views on government's decision to impose states of emergency in seven of the country's 19 police divisions. Ocean Masters of Television Jamaica tells us more. Once again, the effectiveness of the states of emergency is being brought to the fore. On Sunday, Prime Minister Andrew Honis announced the imposition of the measure across seven police divisions in a bid to cauterize the island's high crime rate. Security expert Robert Finzi-Smith believes the current measure will not have the desired effect as before the Prime Minister made the announcement, persons on social media were already speaking about the imposition of a security measure. He says there's no doubt that criminal elements heard about the SOEs before they were declared. Another concern was the decision intelligence-based. Who are we targeting? How many people have we fully identified as producers of violence and that we can put a name and are antecedent to? Because if we know definitively who we are looking for, then their departure from the areas targeted could work to our advantage. For another security expert, Jason Mackay, he believes the detention mechanism under the SOE will be instrumental in holding on to criminal elements. Well, that's a significantly effective mechanism. If you look on Jamaica's crime history, they had a suppression, a, the Suppression of Crime Act, that it is commonly known, that was removed in 1994. It, it was after that that crime statistics and crime control in general started to plot the period because a detention act where you can just arrest without having to face the court within 48 hours is a significantly powerful tool. So I, I guarantee you that that, that, that that type of power will is very effective. On the international scene, a nationwide lockdown has gone into effect in Austria for people who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19. They can now only leave their home for essential activities or to get vaccinated. We get this report from Al Jazeera Television. Just to be allowed outdoors, these people must be able to prove they've either been vaccinated or recently had COVID, what's called in German the 2G-Regel, or 2G rule. If not, they're breaking the law and face a fine of up to 1,450 euros. Ministers say the low uptake of the vaccine and the high number of new cases meant they had to act. Then the the incidence among vaccinated people is declining, but it continues to rise exponentially for the people who are not vaccinated. Currently, the incidence for unvaccinated people in the 18 to 59 age group is over 1,700. So from Monday, there will be a lockdown for the unvaccinated here. Across the border in the German state of Bavaria, many communities are facing the same threat. There too, ministers are urging all the unvaccinated to get the jab. In three German states, the incidence of COVID is already more than 500 per 100,000 residents. In all three, the 2G rule is either in place or about to be implemented. But at a federal level, there seems no clear policy. Unlike the situation in Austria, the caretaker government here is in office, but not really in power. The politicians who matter are still trying to build a majority in parliament. And while they argue over who gets which ministerial job in the next few weeks, it's what COVID might do in the next few days that many people in wider society are worrying about. 
This intensive care unit in Munich is one of many across the country which are full of Covid patients, with the prospect of more to come. If we look at the new infections registered in the past two weeks, we see an increase from 30,000 to 50,000. This also shows up in the occupancy rates. Intensive care patients have doubled, and these 50,000 people who have tested positive now will come to us this week or next week. So the future looks quite dark, I would say, and we're quite worried about how we are going to take care of all these people. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.